Now we have, uh, uh, we are going to move to uh, Odisha uh, traditions, uh, Jagannath Temple Puri and uh, Odissi, the contemporary adaptation of that. Uh, we are going to have uh, two speakers, uh, Sri Pratik Patnaik, a young and dynamic uh, scholar of Odisha culture, uh, who is known among youngsters very well through social media also. Wonderful uh, scholar at such a young age. He is just writing his uh, final year MSc exams now. He is studying MSc physics, wow. uh, <laughs> and he is appearing for the final semester, final exams of uh, MSc. And at this young age, uh, he has become such a great scholar of uh, Odisha culture. Uh, let me give uh, an introduction to him. Pratik Patnaik is an independent researcher and Odissi classical musician. He is currently pursuing his master's in physics under uh, Siksha O. Anusandhanam, deemed to be University Bhuvaneshwar, Odisha. He writes and delivers talks on the culture of Odisha with special focus on Jagannatha temple tradition and uh, traditional musical, uh, musical literature. For his groundbreaking field research and documentation of rare art forms of Odisha, and his specialized efforts in preserving ancient Odyssey compositions from veteran gurus. He has received appreciation from various uh, quarters, including the Chief Minister of Odisha. He has uh, collaborated uh, with several leading authorities in the sphere of culture, a practicing classical musician. He is uh, a disciple of Pandit Guru Ramaro Patra, and he is currently continuing his higher training in Odyssey vocal music as well as the Odissi Veena in uh, the Shishya Parampara of the early 20th century Master Acharya Tarini Charan Patra. Uh, Pratik Patnak, over to you. Hello, Namaskar. Namaskar hey, to everybody. Hey. I will just take into my presentation halfway after I speak. I'll begin by saying that. Uh, the puja paddhatis of Jagannatha, we have all spoken about dance and uh, Dr. Ilyana mentioned about the rituals and everything. Uh, the core concern with the puja paddhati of the Puri Jagannatha temple, of the many manuscripts that we find that detail how the puja is to be performed, upacharas are mentioned. Among them, there are certain upacharas which are called Raja upacharas, which are royal offerings. In these Raja upacharas, systematically dance, song, then Mardala, which is the traditional percussion instrument, the classical drum of Odisha's music, and the Mahuri, which is a wind instrument, then the Veena and Venu, and along with that singing, which is only Gita, they have been offered each using one one shloka. For example, Nritya was offered in the Puri temple with the shloka, Bara Mukhya Janakrutang Lasyang Netra Sukhaspadam Angi Kuru Mahabaho Deva Deva Jagatpate. Uh, the dance performed by Vara Mukhya, the Mukhya of the Vara ladies, which is Lasya and which is pleasing to the eye, Angi Kuru Mahabaho, please accept it. Similarly, Gita was offered saying, Gitaṁ Gita Priya Sriman Susvaram Parameshwara Manasah Preeti Janakaṁ Shravane Kalaya Prabhu. I am singing Shravane Kalaya Prabhu. Uh, please uh, listen to it with your ear. Similarly, Veena and Venu, everything Veena, it was a Veena Yantram, Maya Dattam, Kalayashu Shuvanana. Likewise, these uh, shlokas are from the Neela Chalesh Archana Chandrika, which is an unpublished palm leaf manuscript. Similarly, therefore, this was not only just, uh, uh, it was not only just performed without any Shastrik, it was performed with proper shloka and everything offered to the deity and uh, proper Sanskrit, it was offered, then the dance and everything began. Of course, this is detailed in the Paddhatis, how, to what extent it was implemented practically is another question. But we find that the Shastrik authority has recognized this as an element of the Upacharas, which is not a small deal. The Puri temple, Puri Jagannatha temple, one of the four dhamas, almost the cultural heartland of Odisha, we can say. 
had the most prominent devadasi culture this is not to say that it was found only in the puri temple the puri temple being the largest temple and supporting the one of the largest communities in any parts of entire ancient odisha the parts utkala kalinga and udra if we take everything starting from parts of southern bengal which were under gajapati territory to if we go to the shikakulam district which even now is more or less affected uh, greatly by kalinga then you will find a certain distinction in the culture of shikakulam district of andhra pradesh compared to other districts because that was in kalinga territory for a very very long period of time so that whole area in that whole area if we are to find the single major teetha then it will be the puri temple second if we go it will be the simhachala temple which is the narasimha varaha narasimha temple of simhachala simhachala originally was also constructed by the the shrine was it was uh, supported for a great deal of time by the eastern ganga dynasty which ruled over odisha and there also the devadasi tradition was there so these are two prominent vaishnava shrines where a large number of devadasis were engaged in puri tradition devadasis were known as mahari the term mahari is interpreted various ways some people say mahanari etc etc the most logical and sensible explanation that i have come to hear from traditional sources is that the word maharo is used to refer to a group of cowherds in southern odisha this is ancient odia archaic odia the word is still in use in southern odisha the fem- female of that is mahari so cowherd woman which is a direct translation of gopi if you were to say therefore the word devadasi or the word darika is a very gen or deva ganika what we say these are very general words but the word mahari becomes very unique to the vaishnava parampara therefore it is much in use in the puri tem- temple tradition in the chronicles and records of the puri temple that detail what are the functions of each of the sevayatas or servitors there it is always mentioned mahari the word devadasi is not as preferred as the word mahari is so there uh, in the madola panji or the chronicle it's a chronicle book of the puri temple an account is maintained it has various parts it has historical parts it says for example so and so king constructed the uh, palace you know constructed the palace or constructed the steps or he dug so many ponds that is written another chapter the seva vivarani is given so these are all very old there it is uh, written in the functions of the devadasi it says it mentions the words nachuni and gayani the word nachuni comes from nacha which is the dancer and gayani from geeta which is the singers so we'll just read then i'll translate the line ए तीन धूप बेले जगमोहन मंडप जो समय रे संगीत शास्त्र प्रमाण जो नाट ताचि फ्रम द वेरी फर्स्ट लाइन इट इज क्लीयरली मेनशन दैट संगीत शास्त्र हेज टू बी फलो जगन्नाथ बल्लभ अवकाश में रात्र बड़ सिंहार अवकाश में जो नाट ताचि द बड़ सिंहार विच इज द लास्ट रिचुअल अफ द पुरी जगन्नाथ टेम्पल इन विच जगन्नाथ इज पुट टू स्लीप बड़ श्रृंगार बड़ सिंहार इज द local word uh, in that last which is the night sleep ritual that time the dance is the most crucial parava jatra manankare khatani khatibo in all the various festivals they will have to perform e nata vele jeu nata ko jeu samay re jeu gita se gaibo the song that has been fixed for whatever traditional function for each function there is a traditional melody or song that has been recognized by the puri temple some point in history it's almost codified that that is the song that you have to sing there is no flexibility allowed with respect to that so in in fact even uh, specific songs have been fixed for various rituals for some other rituals there is a range of songs that can be presented so these uh, this madala panji it has not been properly dated the various parts since it has been written over time some parts are older and some parts are more recent but this which i am reading this is certainly over 300 years old can be said with fixed most probably older than that chandana jatra 40 din re jatra bel re gita gaibo now they are delineating what are the functions in which uh, he, they have to perform chandana yatra which is during the heat when he goes to, uh, to the narendra sarovar for chapa or for boat ride and for chandana lagi chandana jatra for the 40 days they have to sing 
चालीस दिन रात्र आलोट लगे बेले जगमोहन दुआर भितर कला पावच ठारे गीत गायब जो समय जो राग मान गीत गाय जो से तान मान गीत गायब दि सेम हेज बी रिटर्न फर द वीणा प्लेयर द रबा प्लेयर एटसेट्रा एंड द फ्लूट प्लेयर दैट फर इच टाइम रागज हेड बीन डिटेड फर बिकज रागज इन द साउथ द समय थिरी इज नट एप्लीकेबल दैट मच दे नट यूजिंग दैट मच इन द नर्थ इट इज वेरी मच इन यूज इन ओडा अल्सो द समय शास्त्र हेज बीन टेकन इन टू कन्सीडरेशन इन राग म्यूजिक देर फोर स्पेसीफिक टाइम्स हेव बीन डिटेड लाइक वसंत राग ड्यूरींग वसंत एंड मालश्री राग ड्यूरींग शरद therefore that is what they mean that has to be followed and they were also following that the typical alignment that they had was the veena player which was called bina karo bina karo had to sit near balabhadra which is towards the left so balabhadra subhadra jagannatha bina karo sat to the left the gayani sat to the right towards jagannatha side and dance was performed mardala the drum was there vangshi or venu the flute was there and uh, on top of that they had upanga which is uh, symbols or gini what we say in odia so this all this uh, was there there were sevayatas that were appointed all this began when uh, all of these sevas the veena kara the singer the dancer everything began dying down as early as the 1940s from what i have heard from our gurus they have mentioned that you know, during 1940 also there were two or three uh, students were learning veena they never graduated to performing and becoming sevayatas in the temple the elders who were surviving continued to serve as vinakaras sometime around uh, 1980 90 also hardly one or two of them were performing once or twice a month which is very less usually they perform 20 25 days in a month so by 1980 or 85 it has come down veena seva has come down to only once or twice in a month that too only a single person is doing out of six or seven appointed people similarly the other seva the mardala seva mardala there were plenty of people they were playing in the temple but they are not appointed in the proper method that is to be undertaken for the sevayatas the maharis were surviving they were almost uh, they had much more say in the internal uh, in the cultural scenario of the temple they had much more say compared to these the veena player or the mardala player the maharis were very much more powerful because the maharis were recognized as walking uh, chalanti pratima of mahalakshmi the gajapati king was recognized as chalanti vishnu in the jagannath temple tradition that is why gajapati king people bow down when he goes similarly then uh, maharis were recognized as walking pratima of mahalakshmi herself this is why the, when the temple rituals were uh, done uh, for example rukmini vivaha which is when jagannatha is krishna and mahalakshmi plays the role of rukmini they are to be married how it takes place is what uh, whatever is uh, described like uh, shishupada uh, marriage with shishupada has been fixed now mahalakshmi goes to her kula ishta devata devi which is vimala in the puri temple the tantric tantra adhishwari of the puri temple vimala vimala wow. acts as the ishta devi of mahalakshmi herself so mahalakshmi as rukmini along with her sakis who are the maharis or the devadasis she goes to vimala temple where krishna has sent his secret letter which is called chitau that chitau is read out in front of mahalakshmi and that also the maharis take mahalakshmi secretly escaping the gaze of the public there she receives message that krishna will come and will kidnap her and then krishna comes and shishupala is tied so in this whole affair the closest people to mahalakshmi are the maharis similarly in ratha yatra it is called navadinatmaka yatra ratha yatra first few days lakshmi stays lakshmi realizes that husband has left and went after that she gets angry and curious why he has left me so on the panchami tithi she goes she goes and she asks jagannath that uh, you have let me you did not take me along you took your sister you took your brother you did not take your wife so in this also the maharis are the sakis who are accompanying a furious lakshmi who is going and breaking a piece of the ratha of lord jagannath and it is the maharis who are breaking and in the ratha yatra the daita sevayatas are the representatives of jagannath and uh, the as far as descriptions are concerned it says that the maharis are to beat 
the daitas they beat the sevaitas of jagannatha asserting dominance as the representatives of lakshmi so they do that and then lakshmi uh, jagannatha says that you stay i will come back in a few days i have done a fault i should have taken you they have a small tussle of sorts and for a time for some time she is consoled and she goes back to the temple breaking a part of the chariot and when jagannatha returns on the bahuda and she stays for 3 days niladri bije balabhadra comes and enters the temple subhadra comes and enters the temple when jagannatha comes lakshmi orders the maharis to go and close the singhadwara so that he cannot enter now it is the ashada month because it is the ashada month it is of course raining everywhere so when jagannatha comes it is raining so he tells my lips are shivering why don't you open the door and all and the in the traditional puri temple the dialogue the bachanika song that they have their fixed song for that also and in various old jagannatha temples of odisha they each have their own song in most of the old songs it is the dasis or the maharis who are doing the talk with jagannatha lakshmi is not talking directly in the later bachanikas we find that lakshmi is talking directly but in the earlier ones we find that jagannatha is being interrogated by the maharis themselves and they they did that role the daitas outside were singing the parts of jagannatha and the maharis inside were singing the parts they were singing as lakshmi so at the end jagannath says that you dasis are very clever i give you lancho or i give you bribe because i went to the market so i have brought so and so gold ornaments and i brought this pato expensive cloth so he gives all that lancho taking that bribe uh, dasis go and maharis inform to mahalakshmi that he has been outside for so long a time he has got pura wet therefore you kindly admit him inside now lakshmi gives up so in this whole ritual you can see the how powerful one has to be to close the singhadwara and jagannatha is outside and it is only the mahari is inside who are doing all the dealing so this was the importance that was asserted to them in the chandana yatra they occupied the patwara in all the processions they went behind singing and dancing to each their own there were specific singers and specific dancers the songs i have been able to collect to some extent the songs for example चंदन यात्रा देश देख गो सखी देख गो राधा माधव चाली देख गो मणि विमान आसे झूली झूली मॉडर्न डे ओडिसी डांस रिपेटर इज टेकन लॉट ऑफ सॉन्ग्स दैट वेर वेरी पॉपुलर एमंग द महारीज एंड एमंग द पब्लिक एज वेल बिकॉज द पब्लिक वुड गेन प्राइमरी एक्सपोजर टू दीज सॉन्ग्स ओनली थ्रू द महारीज and there are other rarer songs as well like in rukmini vivah or krishna vivah they used to sing bhishma ko kumari ki nelo syam ki chhat ke nelo syam ki chhat ke hari ki hari ki bhishma ko kumari ki the sorts of even in their madala panji it is properly mentioned that they have to sing in so and so ragas and so and so talas the talas mentioned are sarimano chandana jhula atho tali and pohapoto these four prominently mentioned out of the ragas i will come to this point later uh, that the maharis also had a function in the vimala temple during the dashahara the time is called sola puja in odisha that time they had to sing a song which was called malasri in the shastras it is said that malashri is the favorite raga of goddess parvati so in front of the goddess that is a purely shakta ritual also they were doing that song went something like hmm. jaya hara chandi a sini ma jaya jaya aadi hi ma ta huni to चिंता मागो 
जय रंबिया तंग नीमा जय जय आदि माता सो लाइक दिस प्योर शाक्त सॉन्ग्स ऑल्सो दे वर सिंगिंग दे वर सिंगिंग सेवरल चैलेंजिंग सॉन्ग्स they were usually trained mother and father used to come and offer the uh, child marriage was prevalent at the age of 9 10 they used to get married so before that age they used to offer their daughters to the temple they were taken up by the elderly devadasis who were already there the maharis they would take they had to then offer an application to the gajapati king saying that i have a daughter and i would like her to perform the be a sevayata in the temple the ritual in the temple was uh, first they were Wetted in a process uh, where the devula, I think the devula karana presided over. The chief of the temple used to interrogate and ask the girls uh, what their plans, whether they were devoted to the god, etc. After a very preliminary deal of interrogation, they were let into the temple, and they used to spend a good amount in the what we can say that the introduction ceremony into the seva. in that ceremony typically in the puri temple the, an old cloth of that jagannath has worn is taken and that is tied onto the head which is called the sadi vanda ceremony similarly a ceremony was done for the new maharis that those were introduced now the first uh, devadasi who, who she was cannot be told this devadasi pratha in odisha is at least 2000 years or older probably older the lack of evidence does not mean that we do not have the tradition we find even before puri temple before vaishnava we find i'll come to that point later but as far as the puri temple is concerned we find in old accounts of jayadeva and vita govinda jayadeva was born in the village kendu bilwa which is very close to puri to in the banks of the prachi river he used to worship a madhava or vishnu image the image is still that 12th century image so what odisha's oral legends which is also written in uh, 18th century accounts of bhakta bhakta malas so there it is written that jayadeva wanted the, a daughter to be born so that he could offer her as a devadasi to the puri temple and then uh, he would teach her everything like the elderly devadasis used to train the younger ones in proper sangeeta and uh, nritya with all mudras and everything it was very conservative and very shastra based as far as until the 1940s after which it faced a sharp decline due to economic and lack of royal patronage the kings were no longer in a position to offer patronage and the government took over forming a jagannath temple board and everything they took over and they totally disturbed the whole functioning of the temple and uh, the devadasis were more or less overlooked by both the royal authority as well as the modern is officers and os officers who took over the temple so whatever it may be jayadeva wanted did not want to be married he wanted to remain a sadhu his life and he wanted to adopt a girl so that uh, he could uh, introduce her as a dasi with proper training however one day a brahmin came and offered his daughter padmavati and he said that lord jagannath has come to me in a dream and said that you go and offer this to sadhu pradhana jayadeva and he has to offer her as his wife now jayadeva is shocked by this he says i don't want to take a wife this is all mohamaya i don't want to get into this but considering it is jagannatha's order finally he gives in and then in the gita govinda is written padmavati charana charana chakravarti he has clearly written that he used to sing and padmavati used to dance in the early inscriptions it is properly mentioned that uh, by the time by the 12th century the gita govinda performance by devadasis was a core ritual which could not be overlooked sometime in the 15th century or 14th century gajapati purushottam deva wrote another version of the gita govinda called the abhinava gita govinda and he tried to substitute jayadeva's gita govinda by his own work which was opposed by both the brahmin orthodoxy as well as by the devadasis one would think because his son prataparudra deva has issued an inscription in the year 1499 which says that the devadasis have to stay pure in mind they have to be dedicated to jagannath and they have to sing only the geeta govinda and the traditional music traditional ragas etc they have to learn from the old older artists then they have to continue the lineage 
they will not sing anything other than the gita govinda if they sing anything other than the gita govinda then they will jagannathan ko drohi they will be rebelling against the authority of lord jagannath himself this is how it is mentioned one would think that this inscription the warning against anything other than the gita govinda the story goes that king purushottam deva wanted to substitute jayadeva's work with his own abhinava gita govinda the new gita govinda and as a test both the manuscripts were placed in front of jagannath and the door was closed the next morning it was found that jayadeva's gita govinda poti was kept on top this was below so it is recognized that jagannath wanted this to continue so that purushottam deva uh, would not be emotionally hurt jagannath ordered in a dream that one one shloka of your work will also be included but jayadeva's will also always be given prominence apart from this there are stories uh, in odisha's oral lore one such story is that uh, in a field of brinjal cultivation in an area that area a lady was plucking brinjals and while plucking brinjals she was singing the gita govinda enchanted by her rendition of gita govinda jagannath comes and when he comes in the thorns of the brinjal plant his uh, yellow cloth gets stuck in the pata uh, the expensive yellow cloth pata cloth gets torn by the thorns of the brinjal plant and uh, when it is time for the niti when the puja panda looks into his arms and uh, palms and jagannath has to be visible in the palm Uh, knowing that the puja panda has arrived he rushes back to the temple so that nobody will come to know that he has come here so he rushes back and when he goes back it gets torn so the puja panda has noticed that it has get torn or uh, gotten torn and that night they receive a dream that no no such and such lady was singing in the brinjal uh, that field and you bring her it is said that she also got introduced as a devadasi so this is few of the legends concerning devadasis there was one fakiri mahari some part of the 18th century and uh, she is known to have surpassed even the greatest poets of then classical odia literature and classical odia music odissi music their uh, odisha's music i might mention is separate from the north indian and south indian traditions it is mentioned in bharata's natya shastra as an independent pravritti so that pravritti the odissi music and odissi dance with its own raga taala mudra etc it was functional in the puri temple very strongly the devadasis were almost the main authorities of this music and dance so it is known that fakiri mahari surpassed even the greatest classical poets of uh, her time and musicians of her time so much so that people were afraid of talking to her it is known that few poets went to her and gave her uh, stanzas to interpret which she discarded saying this is only child's play this is no, no big deal so like these stories are there however even uh, one of the earliest exponents of uh, stage theater drama and all they came from mahari families she was the daughter of a mahari manchashri radharani mishra i think she took the title guru pankaj charan das who was the uh, first guru who brought odissi dance onto the stage outside the puri jagannath temple was the adopted son of ratnaprabha mahari and he very strongly held on to the authenticity of the mahari way of dancing and the mudra and the, the general uh, aesthetic associated with the mahari dance compared to the somewhat uh, somewhat uh, extrapolated from it odissi dance the mahari dance had a very subtle feel to it and a bhav of samarpana which was as uh, milena ma'am mentioned hara priya devi mentioning that uh, that inner soul is lost somehow when it becomes lokabhimukhi or manchamukhi so similarly uh, pankaj sir used to insist on preserving whatever was of his mahari lineage and uh, the mahari vidya was it was not given to gent gents or the purusha members of the family but he acquired it by pure emulation by looking at his mother and everyone he used to insist very strongly and until the end he used to insist that the this is only the core dance because it is offered completely to the god another interpretation of the mahari term as i said the mahari term they used to mean cowherd or gopika in uh, madhava patnaik's vaishnava lila amrita which is an 18th century account of the puri temple's functionings certain anecdotes associated with the temple it says that jayadeva's wife padmavati used to perform rahasa dance so 
for dance they are calling rasa leela so jagannatha is krishna and these are gopis and they are performing rasa leela in the odia tradition the yogi and the tantric and the shaivite shakta heritage even the bauddha heritage that was alive from the 5th to 10th century the remnants of that 11 12th century vaishnavism took from became very prominent and majority of the public accepted vaishnavism mostly due to the influence of jayadeva's geeta govinda and even then even in that light the earlier remnants of the rituals those were not modified completely it is said that ramanuja acharya came to the temple and expressed uh, surprise in how these tantric and all these remnants are surviving even under the influence of vaishnavism and he tried to apparently change it and make it purely vaishnavite on which the next morning he found himself uh, awake in shri kurum shri kurumam shri kurumam was also a place of uh, odia worship which we know now is in the shikakulam district shri kurumanatha swami he found himself awake there and jagannath told to him in a dream that don't try to change what is there in my ways and in shri kurumam you do whatever you want but in puri don't you dare to touch what is there so they were that conservative and due to that certain remnants of tantrism and uh, the shakta remnants survived even in the dance as i was telling the earlier devadasi was were found in inscriptions in the shaivite temples of odisha if you see the inscriptions kakatapur mangala temple which is maha mangala i can show you a picture of her this deity which is a maha mangala of the kakatpur temple maha mangala or sarva mangala as she is said in front of this deity the mahari dance was performed apart from this there is one brahmeshwara temple where also it was performed and there is a shobhaneshwara temple in niyali these are all shaiva temples where the, the rituals were performed now the question is what dance was performed the geeta govinda was not written so and mostly sanskrit songs were prevalent during this age so definitely they either did abhinaya which is interpretative dance or they did pure dance which is doesn't depend on sight and only emphasizes on the beauty of movement we see even in the latter mahari dance it was classified in the puri temple there are two rituals in one in the morning one in the evening or the night in the morning ritual there was no accompanying music there was only mardala and the raja guru the royal guru who was one of the most important people his main ritual was to stand with a golden stick sunabeto beside the mahari when she was doing the pure shuddha nrutya when she was doing in near the garuda stamba scholar frederick maglin she mentions that that dance was done facing south not facing the east where the deity is there so facing south means it is clearly not an interpretative dance and they are not uh, telling some vaishnava lyrics bhakti movement has not come become prominent by this time so this dance is clearly a remnant of the tantra da- tantra dance in which the panchamakara worship panchamakara worship uh, what was there in the kaula achara pratha it was subsequently concealed in vaishnava achara in guise of the yogic things like how they used to say for example uh, mother they used to say by doing yogic khechari mudra whatever the amrita is there from the brahmarandra drinking that amrita that is the mother similarly in khechari mudra the tongue is to be turned uh, in the opposite direction and swallowed so swallowing the tongue is equated with mangsa or meat similarly maithuna they used to identify as the atmarati or the uh, union of prakriti and purusha within the body itself matsya they used to do with the sushumna nadi inside the body the pavana that is there in the sushumna nadi they used to identify all this even when 15th century vaishnavism was in its peak this yogic double fold interpretation was emphasized by the pancha saka purusha they did not want to discard this heritage so they made it some a kind of collective heritage it kept adding on it was never subtracted so therefore the mahari dance also it is something of this sort as uh, she mentioned dr iliana also mentioned they one of the interpretations offered by the rajaguru of the puri temple to frederick maglin was that uh, the raja 
or the pada raja which meant dust which also meant uh, the menstrual discharge the raja on the raja that would be left after the dance of the devadasis that is the dust which is also equated in tantra with that that to the people would roll in the dust this is something that is not documented by other authorities cannot be confirmed but the equalization of raja with both meanings is something very typical to tantra tantra of course emphasizes uh, these things so therefore in the mahari or the devadasi rituals of odisha is a very strong tantric background which perhaps will be very difficult to find outside odisha and this uh, thing was still there in the night ritual they used to do the geeta govinda and they used to enact the geeta govinda which is a pure vaishnava thing to do for their services they enjoyed land and they enjoyed lots of uh, royal rights people of course revered them they used to receive daily food mahaprasada from the puri temple and uh, when they passed away they used to receive vaishnava agni from the puri temple kitchen now we can talk about the earliest uh, mentions as of as we are concerned with uh, british literature which is when everything became uh, came to be disrupted the earliest records that we find in odisha the uh, there was an sevayat of the puri temple called the meena nahaka whose function was to supervise the personal life of the devadasis because they were married to the god himself they were not permitted to have any partners they were not permitted to have even uh, uh, royal partners or even brahmin partners so there was a sevayata appointed purely to oversee that they are not having any partners they used to live most of them were uh, distributed throughout but due to this tantra association the chudanga sahi named after the 11th century king ananta varma chodaganga deva who was the constructor of the present jagannath temple that chudanga sahi was uh, hugely occupied by the devadasis antar kali bhaga prasthana hey yes sir should i stop no 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 okay uh, the, uh, i i i echo. no no the the uh, i think you are coming to your conclusion now yes uh, so i just answer. wanted to remind you sure so in that uh, the sahi the street which was named after a king who constructed the present day jagannath temple the king was known for being a master of tantra in some parts of odisha the devadasis are also known as goni which which is a word which is associated with mystics of tantra mystics and the simple people used to believe that dance used to cast a spell on them therefore they called magician therefore they used the word goni but how it has been the whole thing has been misrepresented by the british missionaries first they documented that devadasi seva is there sometime in 1804 then they when they saw the jagannath image they were all written uh, you can read to some it may seem impossible for the human mind to become so debased as to worship an object having no higher claims to homage than this strange as it may seem the monstrous form has received and receives the adoration of a large portion of the human race they were shocked to see the image of jagannatha and similarly they have written a few lines in the two adjacent buildings morning and evening dancing girls displayed their professional skill for the amusement of the idols enthroned in the large edifice this is 1848 similarly later also they have uh, mentioned that jagannatha has about 600 uh, servants and of these priests and dancing girls live on the gifts of the people what is wrung from them 1905 also it is going the same they have written monstrosity and they have written that in tirupati the custom of marrying devadasis to the god and similarly the marrying was there in 1905 1904 we find 40 we find that it is coming down as of 1960 only the last 12 or 18 are surviving 1980 still lower as of 2018 and 19 the last devadasi passed away was parasamani devadasi you can see her kokila prabha devadasi and parasamani devadasi one of the there some of the last they we know were parasamani devadasi we know had received training in odissi classical music from the great guru singhari shyam sundarkar they were veteran exponents but the rigor of the form that was prevalent before 
during the royal age that was no longer the case they wrote many petitions to the government to provide monetary support but did not receive any the british sarkar along with the governmental apparatus painted them in negative light whereas they were never associated with any kind of prostitution and in the latter parts of their lives when the odissi dance received a lot of limelight across the globe many odissi dancers and researchers went the it was good there was documentation there was uh, footage taken of these devadasis but uh, they were always uh, in a way exoticized by these outside researchers who did not seem to get the core of the the core of the dance was not to perform dance the core of the dance was to perform seva and this is emphasized in tantra also so the, it is not about displaying those lots and lots of movements and karanas their uh, focus was on doing as as less as they could do it was very minimalistic it was total samarpana what they say and they were very focused on creating bhava and later when devadasi was painted in negative light this gotipu form came in where uh, small boys were dressed as ladies and they were uh, made to perform the same functions that the devadasis used to do earlier so now these gotipu has took a major portion of their audience so now devadasis are not needed for some rituals where these gotipus are taking over the historicity of this is disputed but anyhow this gotipu is certainly a later innovation compared to now we see it is the women are gradually being taken out of the although the temple still maintained they maintained their seva inside the temple outside the temple the gotipu has began gaining, gaining their importance and this gotipua comes from a pure vaishnava lineage as far as we can trace back whereas the devadasis historically the tantra lineage it clarifies that it is certainly an older ritual therefore presence in these vaishnava temples in southern odisha temples also we found devadasis but vaishnava association was certain limited in southern odisha this is tikiri chandra patra one of the devadasis of the jagannatha temple of darakota south odisha it has not also been documented who were the devadasis what were their names what is the difference of the rituals they used to perform compared to the puri temple it has not been documented unfortunately puri it has been documented but it has been so exoticized in the tantra and the erotic element even when the devadasis themselves were denying certain things it has been unnecessarily glamorized that has happened the this kind of thing uh, shashimani devi often used to tell guru pankajchand das often used to tell but unfortunately whatever we have we didn't get enough time to talk with them and take their point of view the polished culture took over and uh, outside culture the pradarshanatmaka culture of showing so many so many mudras Uh, that's why harapriya devi and all used to tell until the last that the soul and essence of the minimalism has been lost so i think i'll end here okay thank you very much uh, pratik actually you are a treasurable asset for entire india with regard to the studies of our culture that was such an enlightening uh, a way of presenting the uh, uh, analysis of uh, both the historical and uh, uh, cultural presentation about uh, the devadasi culture mahari particularly the mahari culture of orisha uh, jagannath temple uh, this boy is actually such a treasure for all of us i used to think uh, that uh, we in the senior generation have been working on these issues uh, for a very long time and we develop an attachment to our own knowledge and then we used to think what will happen in future uh, who will take it up and uh, now we have people like pratik we these are giving us hope for the future he is such a young boy he has such a long life of him uh, for future uh, where he can and come up with uh, more and more contributions uh, though currently he is pursuing msc physics he told me uh, that he was going to pursue uh, ma in Odi- odia language odia literature and i asked him to pursue odia classical literature particularly and he said he was going to do that and uh, for the entire uh, odia classical cultural studies he is a very big asset 
Pratik, uh, thank you very much. Actually, for being born, uh, I I thank God for uh, making you take birth. Uh, uh, you are born with a purpose. We in Sanskrit use the word Karana Janma. So please play the role for which you are born. Uh, thank you very much. You have anything to say, Pratik? You wanted to say something? Uh, my greatest misfortune is the last Devadasi passed away only two, three years ago. And due to all her family not allowing anybody to meet her and her ill health, could not meet her. That is the greatest thing. And nobody else, uh, see, all documentation is from an outsider point of view. There is nobody from an insider point. That is the bad thing. Otherwise, yeah. it, the dance has given a lot of scope to traditional marriages, all documentary, etc. But somehow, what they wanted to convey has not been conveyed. This is the sad part. Yeah, actually, that is why I see that uh, the work by people like uh, Guru Sutna Sundari and uh, earlier uh, Professor Nataraj Ramakrishna, uh, all these people, that was very important in these areas. The, they walk to the reality that uh, these people may not survive for long and we have to immediately go talk to them, document uh, their views, uh, collect the uh, material as uh, quickly as possible. And uh, that was happening from others like uh, Saskia Akersenbu uh, and other researchers also in the Tamil uh, areas. And uh, there were many such researchers who were documenting this. Such a thing should have happened in uh, Odisha region also. It happened. Grammar was codified to some extent. But as they said, many, they had a huge repertoire of songs, for example. Nobody collected that. Mm. Now that is lost, of course. Yeah. Okay.